Just like wine has different varietals, tea has different cultivars. Different tea cultivars can have different nutrient and flavor profiles, so they are very important to consider when choosing a tea. Some cultivars produce smooth and sweet flavors, while others produce slightly more bitter or grassy flavors. Some tea cultivars are more resistant to the cold, while some can only be grown in milder temperatures. In this video, we're going to outline a few of the basic types of cultivars for Japanese green teas and what advantage each of them have. The most common type of tea cultivar in Japan is the Yabukita cultivar. This represents around 70% of all the tea produced in Japan. There are two main reasons for its popularity. The first is that it captures a lot of the different aspects that people want in a green tea. It has a vegetal or grassy flavor, a little bit of sweetness, a light floral note, and a hint of astringency or bitterness. The second reason for its popularity is that it's the most resistant to frost, so it can be grown all over Japan, not just in the more tropical regions. Yutaka Midori is the second most popular tea cultivar in Japan. The name means lush green, and it's known as the perfect cultivar for these deep steamed fukumushi teas. The Yutaka Midori provides a nice sweetness and a powerful green color. It's commonly grown in the regions of Kagoshima and Miyazaki, and the buds begin to form earlier in the springtime, which means it could be harvested before Yabukita. Okumidori tea plants were created by crossbreeding the wild Zairai tea plants and the more common Yabukita tea plants. This cultivar was originally intended to produce premium quality Senja, but now it is often reserved for premium Gyokuro and Matcha. The flavor profile of the tea is smooth with a round finish. This comes from the higher concentration of amino acids in the tea. It buds later than other teas, which gives the tea an advantage in case the tea crop experiences a frost in the early springtime. Saimidori is another variety of tea produced in Japan. It is typically used for higher quality teas because of its light and sweet flavor. The name means clear green and it was actually discovered as recently as the 1990s. Although this tea has its advantages over Yabukita when it comes to flavor, it has one big disadvantage and that is that it's sensitive to frost. That's why you mostly see Saimidori being grown in southern Japan, where the winters are milder. The Asanoka tea cultivar is quite rare in Japan as a whole, but you may encounter it more frequently in the region of Kagoshima where it grows best. This tea provides a nice sweetness with a hint of this starchy cereal flavor. This tea is mostly used for lighter senches, but it can be found in blended teas as well. This tea cultivar was created by crossbreeding the Yabukita with the Chinese Hiramizu cultivar. The Asatsuyu cultivar is a light and sweet cultivar often used in shaded teas like like Gyokuro and Kabusecha. It can be crossed with the Yabukita to produce the Saimidori cultivar, another great variety to use for shaded teas. This tea has a nice smooth taste with notes of steamed vegetables and sweet corn. It is even said that senches made from this varietal almost taste like a Gyokuro. The Goko tea cultivar was originally cultivated from wild tea plants in the area around Uji. When shaded, this tea plant produces a powerful umami flavor, which makes it a good choice when it comes to producing teas like Gyokuro, Kabusecha, and Matcha. This tea cultivar is quite rare, but it's sought after by gyokuro and matcha enthusiasts for its rich umami flavor. Next time you purchase tea, you should check to see which cultivar it comes from. Just like you search for different varietals of wine before making a purchase, you should also search for different cultivars of tea to get a basic sense of what the tea will taste like before you buy it. I hope you have found this information helpful. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you next time.